remember most of my life that different does not equal bad. So in American society, you cannot discriminate against someone legally based on race, national origin, gender, sexual orientation, disability, and probably a whole lot of other things I'm forgetting at the moment. But have you ever considered that that does not include how people look? That does not include how much people weigh? That does not include people who maybe have multiple tattoos, piercings, weird colored hair or whatever that may be. So when I was in college, I, I found some research that I kind of found a little disturbing. A group of first time kindergarten parents were asked, would you rather your child be attractive if that meant being a little less intelligent or would you rather them be more intelligent even if that meant being a little less attractive? And I'm thinking no brainer. I want my kid to be smart. Who cares what they look like, right? Well, the research showed that most people wanted their kid to be more attractive, even if it meant being less intelligent. And they gave their reasoning as, you know, most people judge someone on how they look. And other research has shown that the more attractive someone is in society, the more favorably that they're viewed, such as, oh, well, they're more trustworthy or they're smarter, even if they're not. So, I'm um, surfing to the channels one night and I come across a TLC series called Taboo. I don't know if the series is still on, but they would tackle different topics such as weird sexual practices on one end of the spectrum to something as simple as being ugly. The title of the show was Taboo, Ugly, and I was like, okay, why is being ugly taboo? So curiosity got the best of me, and I turned it on. It was an hour-long show. It had three stories, and the first one was about a modeling agency in the UK that would hire people who were different looking. That was their slogan. And you would come in and get in front of this camera and say what you thought was ugly about you. Maybe you had a physical feature that was always made fun of, or something you just didn't like about yourself. And this was a pretty successful agency. They interviewed two people who had had so much work that that was their full-time job. And they even said, you know, when people ask me what I do, I don't tell them I'm a model, because all they would do is just look at me and laugh. One guy looked pretty normal on the outside, but when he started talking or smiling, his teeth were so crooked, I was thinking, man, this guy's got to be an orthodontist dream, right? <laughs> and the other lady was very pale, white skin, curly, dare I say, frizzy red hair, and she probably weighed about 400 pounds. And they were both full-time models with this agency. So, next story was about a little boy named Nathan. He was eight years old. He was born with a genetic birth defect called Treacher Collins Syndrome. And it's where the facial bones are either missing or very minimal. So, he had minimal cheekbones and his eyes kind of drooped down and they watered a lot. His jawline was missing and so his kind of hung open and blocked his trachea so it was kind of hard for him to breathe or eat or anything like that. So in, to, in order to fix this, they put a trach collar on him and it kind of held up his chin so he could breathe and eat properly. But the thing about Treacher Collins is that it's just a physical deformity. This little boy was all there, cognitively age appropriate. He knew exactly what people were saying about him. So with his medical surgeries and treatments, he also received counseling. The counselor said, well, he needs to learn resilience for the world. That's pretty sad. And the last, uh, the last part of the episode was about a fellow named Dallas, who was actually from Fort Worth. <laughs> And he and his uncle one day were painting a church with the assistance of a bucket, like the power lineman would use. And 
The uncle says, okay, Dallas, you're a little too close to those power lines. We're going to bring you down, readjust, send you back up. Well, on the way down, something happened, and Dallas's forehead hit the live power line and melted his entire face off, including his eyeballs. I rushed him to the hospital. The doctor said, not only is this guy lucky to be alive, but he has fourth degree burns, and that's not even a thing. He said his skull is charred black to the point where I don't know how we're ever going to release him from the hospital. He has no face. Dallas was actually one of the first successful face transplant recipients. And at first when I thought about a face transplant before I heard this story, I was thinking, why do people want to get rid of their face? Just, okay. just be okay with it. it it's going to be okay. But in this guy's case, he just needed another face. So thinking about all of those things, why am I up here persuading you to not judge people, not make snap judgments based on their looks? I want to leave you with one last thought. The two serial killers, Jeffrey Dahmer and Ted Bundy, when you think about them in American society, nobody ever says anything positive about Jeffrey Dahmer. But what do they always say about Ted Bundy? Oh, he was so good looking and charming and educated. Yeah, except for he butchered dozens of women with no remorse. Nobody ever says that. Why? Well, maybe it's because Jeffrey Dahmer was ugly. Thanks for the question. <laughs>